Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is another Wonder Why reaction. I just did the, um, what was the video I just did? The, the US States, the, the best and worst thing about US States kind of thing. And I enjoyed the video and I thought, I'm gonna check out more of this guy's channel. And the video I saw pop up was the most complex international borders in the world. I did a video similar to, th similar to this in the past, but the video wasn't really like, I feel like it was just sort of like, it just showed a few pictures here and there, it didn't really go in depth. And I saw in the comments, a lot of people were saying, this is not, there's a lot more crazy ones than this. And there was one that I heard of, the Netherlands and Belgium one. I don't, I forget which city it is or which town it is, but it's just a weird, weird sort of like, just, it's like sort of borders upon borders upon borders. And it's just the weirdest thing. But yeah, maybe it will touch upon this, touch upon that one in this video, but I'm just interested in checking this out. I'm not going to ramble too much because that's what I usually do for intros. But quick shout out to my second channel. Links in the description if you want to subscribe to that. As well as that, I've got my Instagram and my Twitter links there if you want to follow me. But let's get into this and let's see the most, the, just the weirdest sort of borders in countries, man. I, I enjoy seeing these things, man. I love geography and I just enjoy seeing these most random, random sort of borders and just things on the same sort of topic as that. But let's just get into this one, man. The international like border channel between well. two countries defines where one country ends and another begins. This is something that should be incredibly <coughs> simple but often isn't. International borders come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Some are simply an imaginary line in the middle of the street while others are much more clearly. What the fuck? Where is that? What the fuck? Yo, that is ridiculous. <laughs> that is the craziest thing I've seen. What countries are this? Is that? Oh, it's the US and... Fucking hell, that is insane. That is blowing my mind. That is ridiculous. It's literally a full-grown city next to... And then it just stops. But I can't get my head around that. Some are even guarded 24-7. Yeah, but no, before I begin, I need that to one was explain crazy. a couple of terms. Enclave and exclave. An enclave mm -hmm. is a country or part of a country that is entirely surrounded by another country, while an exclave is part of a country that is geographically separated from the rest of the country. In this example, country A is an enclave of country B because it's totally surrounded by it. In this next example, Y is an exclave of country A. Exclaves okay, aren't yeah. necessarily always enclaves too, either because they have more than one border or because they have a coastline. Or both. In this final example, X is both an enclave and an exclave. It's an enclave of country B and an exclave of country A. There's three countries in the world that are enclaved by another country. Vatican City is in Italy. San Marino is in Italy. And Lesotho, I don't... Lesotho is South Africa, right? San Marino, that is Italy, The first right? of which is the Vatican City, home of the Pope and the smallest country in the world, which is an like enclave inside. of Italy. Yeah. And Italy apparently loves enclaves because it also has the country of San Marino enclaves mm -hmm. within its borders. But if that's not enough to convince you Italy loves enclaves, then take a look at Campione d'Italia, an Italian exclave which is an enclave within Switzerland. This tiny municipality, home to 2,000 Italians, uses the Swiss franc as its currency and is exempt from EU VAT, a fact which is greatly taken advantage of in the form of Europe's largest casino. So, oh, Italy is a country that has not one but two countries within its borders, and part of it is enclaved within another country. <laughs> The final and by far largest enclave country in the world is Lesotho, with a population of just over 2 million, it's surrounded by South Africa. To put the size difference into perspective, here's a comparison between <coughs> San Marino and Vatican City. And now here's Lesotho. Lesotho is 70,000 times the size of Vatican City. So it's huge. Now a country it's within a, big a country, country is. is all very well and good, but it's not exactly that complex. So let's take things up a notch. We've looked at enclaves, now let's look at enclaves within enclaves also mm. known as counter enclaves or this is where it gets border weird. enclaves. Now I'm not talking about country A within country B within country C. Well, that would be an enclave within an enclave, there's no examples of that in the world. I'm talking about country A within country B within country, country A. A. Yeah. Once again, there's three examples. The least complex of which is in the Middle East and the border between the United Arab Emirates and Oman. Here we can see a United Arab Emirates exclave, which is an enclave of an Omani exclave which is itself an enclave of the United Arab Emirates. <laughs> That's so ridiculous to <laughs> this me. This is the least complex of the three examples. <laughs> Next we move over to Europe where things... 
I know this one's crazy. I can't remember what it is and I've just heard about it. I don't think I've ever actually seen about it, but I've heard people talk about it and it just sounds crazy Such to me. Such a bit ridiculous with the border between the Netherlands and Belgium and the interlocking municipalities of Barl Nassau and Barl Hertog, which is a little something like this. Like what? How does that even happen? In total, there are 22 Belgian enclaves and 8 Dutch enclaves, 7 of which are counter enclaves. <laughs> But these aren't just imaginary lines. Every single inch of the border within the town is clearly marked, letting you know which country you're in. <laughs> and the border passes through just about anything. It passes what? through streets, so next door neighbours may not be living in the same country. House numbers clearly what indicate which the country the residents are living in. It also passes through shops, where you might select your items in one country and pay for them in another. Restaurants and cafes, where different tables are in different countries car parks, making it possible to legally park in two countries at the same time, and what? even <laughs> houses. Some residents of Bar- See, it's just an inconvenience. I wonder what led to this even happening. in the Netherlands and make their breakfast in Belgium. <laughs> but which country do these people live in if the border passes right through their house? Well, the answer is very simple. Wherever your front door is, that's what country you live in. Well, it's simple unless you live in this house, in which the border passes directly <laughs> through the front door. This is the only house You've that's two, both countries. Two doors. It has two doorbells, one for each country, and two house numbers because it has two addresses. <laughs> Before 1985, the borders were marked and were left vague. <laughs> this caused an unfortunate situation for a Belgian man living in Belgium. For so he thought. But in 1995, when the border was accurately marked, it was revealed he was actually living in the Netherlands, not in <laughs> Belgium. Legally, what? at this point, he would have to change his address over to the Netherlands, but unwilling to go through the bureaucratic nightmare of having to change which country he pays his taxes to and change which company provides his utilities, he decided against it. He decided instead to move his door. front door. What? Genius. That living is in Barl makes it seem like a bit of a nightmare, but it isn't really. <laughs> Because both countries are part of the EU's Schengen area, borders are completely open, allowing free travel between the countries. And since 2002, both countries use the Euro. And there's also no language barrier because Dutch is the official yeah. language of Northern Belgium. But just when you thought things couldn't possibly get more complicated, wait until you see the enclave complex between India and Bangladesh. I remember seeing this in the previous video and this one was wild Bangladesh. as well. This single border alone comprises 80% of the world's enclaves, with 106 Indian enclaves within Bangladesh <laughs> and 92 enclaves of- I swear they said this has been sorted recently. I saw comments saying this has actually been sorted recently, because this video is actually seven years ago, so obviously it's probably a bit outdated of a few things. But I remember seeing comments of people saying this is actually, like, in recent times, this has been sort of Bangladesh sorted Bangladesh within India. And of the combined 198 enclaves, 24 of them are second order enclaves. And this border Second also order. has the world's only third order enclave. That's right, an enclave within an enclave within an enclave. That is, part of India, inside part of Bangladesh, inside part of India, which is inside Bangladesh. Fuck. But as ridiculous as this is, unfortunately it's actually a very serious issue and completely different from the situation in Europe. India and Bangladesh don't have open borders, so for the 50,000 people living in the enclaves, they're basically trapped. What? The governments don't provide anything for them, so they don't have access to basic life essentials such as running water, electricity or gas, and there's no schools or hospitals within the enclaves, and the emergency services won't cross any borders, so crime is extremely prevalent. Jesus. In 2011, the governments of both countries agreed to sort out the enclaves by swapping land, but more than two years later and still nothing has changed. However, some small progress has been made. The team via corridor, a narrow strip of Indian land separating the largest Bangladesh enclave from the mainland, has been leased to them by the Indian government, allowing residents to travel to the mainland. Although in saying that, this was first proposed back in 1974 and took nearly 40 mm. years to come to an agreement. Moving away from enclaves now and on to the- Good news is I have heard from what people have said that has been sorted, like I said, so. Thank God for that, but I didn't realise it was to that extreme. So that's kind of, like, that's just sad at that point. Like, that's just ridiculous how that's even happening in this Land day and age. No wants, which is in the African desert between Egypt and Sudan. Where exactly the border is, however, is the base. Oh, I remember this one as well. Like, no one wants to claim it, do they? If you ask Egypt, they'll tell you it's here. But if you ask Sudan, they'll tell you it's here. The overlapping border claims create two areas of land, and both countries claim the same land the Halaib Triangle, 
leaving the adjacent land unclaimed by both countries. Mm. Neither country can claim the land known as Beer Tawil as they would have to give up their claim to the much more desirable land. If we compare the two pieces of land, the Halaib Triangle is 10 times bigger, has access to the Red Sea and has several settlements and small villages where Beer Tawil is landlocked and completely uninhabited. The origin of the dispute dates back to 1899 before Sudan was an independent country and was a condominium between the United Kingdom and Egypt known as Anglo-Egyptian Sudan. The border was set at the 22nd parallel. Then, three years later, the British drew a new line which they called the administrative boundary, which better reflected the usage of the land. This is because of the Egyptian tribe that used the land south of the 22nd parallel and the people living in the Halaib Triangle were culturally more closely related to that of the Sudanese population. Therefore, in 1956, when Sudan became independent, they assumed the administrative boundary was the border, while Egypt assumed it was the 22nd parallel. Good old the triangle is currently administered by Egypt, but most maps simply use a dotted line for the disputed border. Bir Tawil is the only unclaimed land outside of Antarctica. And speaking of Antarctica, this is another place for complex borders. That's right, even a continent with no government or permanent population has international borders. <laughs> well, kind of. There are more claims to land than actual borders. Parts of Antarctica are claimed by the United Kingdom, Norway, Australia, France, New Zealand, and this is where things get complicated, Chile and Argentina. The land to the southwest is unclaimed, so basically there's land that's claimed by three countries and land that's claimed by no countries at all. <laughs> the reason no one has claimed it is because of the Antarctica Treaty. Article 4 of said treaty states that the treaty does not recognise, dispute, nor establish territorial sovereignty claims. No new claims shall be asserted while the treaty is in force. The treaty is signed by 50 countries, including all countries that have claims of land on the continent, although Russia and the United States have reserved their right to claim land. This means that any new claims made on the continent will be unrecognised, and basically that all current claims have no official sovereignty over their claimed land. Wow. The final place to look at for complex borders is the island of Cyprus. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking Cyprus doesn't have any complex borders, or, you know... It does, isn't that like northern Cyprus, like that's claimed, like... Turkey, that's related to Turkey, something like that. Any borders for that matter. But Cyprus is an absolute minefield of border complexities. The island is split roughly in half by the UN buffer zone which separate the Republic of Cyprus from the unrecognised self-declared independent country of Northern Cyprus. And then there's the sovereign base areas under British control. Oh, but wow. the complications don't end there. We're back to enclaves and exclaves again with the Northern Cyprus exclave on the northwest coast of the island. And also how does that happen? I don't get how that happens. It's just mental. The southern base area up to Kelly, there's four exclaves of Cyprus, three of which are enclaves, two of which are so close they're only separated by a British road. <laughs> and if we take a closer look right here, we can what? see the same again, a British road through Cyprus. And this is the only part of the island not split by the UN buffer zone. The British road basically acts as the de facto international border. But it's not actually an international border because Northern Cyprus is considered occupied territory of the Republic of Cyprus and is almost totally unrecognised as a country. Only one UN member recognises Northern Cyprus, yes. Turkey. Yeah. Which is unsurprising given that the official name of Northern Cyprus is the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. Oh, wow. The cause of the border irregularities go back to before 1960 when the island of Cyprus was a British colony. Then, in 1960, when Cyprus gained independence, the United Kingdom kept the land around their RAF bases given their strategic locations just off the Middle East. Then, in 1974, Turkey invaded Cyprus and took about 40% of their land. Barriers were built on the middle of the island which is now guarded by UN peacekeeping forces. Then, in 1983, the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus was established and not much has changed since then. Of course, this is by no means an exhaustive list. There's plenty more complex borders in the world like the border between North and South Korea, which mm -hmm. technically isn't a border because technically it's still at war, or the maritime border between the Diomede Islands, which also happens to be the international dateline. Therefore, despite only being four kilometers between the islands, there's a 23 hour time difference. See, that's ridiculous But those to me. are topics for another day. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I enjoyed this, man. I really enjoyed this video. I'm definitely gonna have to, I mean, if this goes down well, I'm definitely gonna check out part two and part three, because I really enjoy these kinds of videos, but, let me know your thoughts on this. Some of these are ridiculous to me. India, Bangladesh, issue resolved in 2015. Thank God for that, man. So which country do you live in? It's complicated. Random guys, so where do you live? Me in part of India, which is Bangladesh, which is in India, which is in Bangladesh. <laughs> this video should be called, this is what happens when the British draw off borders on maps. <laughs> Literally, it's just the British, man. So there's a piece of unclaimed land, sand, which between Sudan and Egypt, anyone want to start a country? 
<laughs> Imagine if Belgium and Netherlands had closed borders. So this unclaimed land, does that mean anyone could just go there? And like, there's no laws there, there's nothing there, like, that is just, it's a weird sort of thought. Like, surely there's no laws there, if no land is claimed. I can, maybe there's international laws though, I don't know, maybe that's the case. I can have my trunk in Netherlands and my en my engine in Belgium. I can sleep in Belgium, wash my clothes in Netherlands, have breakfast in Belgium, watch TV in Netherlands, go to the park in Belgium and the park in Netherlands. I am amazed. Just wanted to come laugh at silly borders, can't just have, now my head hurts and I'm confused. House in two countries and two doorbells, lower fun times with the post. Imagine ordering there. So can you repeat, please? Where do you live? Belgium or Netherlands? Yeah. <laughs> it's so messed up. Did you guys notice that wherever you find complicated, stupid nonsense borders, you also find the British at some point in history? Curious coincidence. It's the British, man. We just never fail to fucking... We just... We just idiots, man. It's just stupid. How these borders even become things? It's just dumb, but... Yo, it makes for good content and a good laugh, right? But... That Netherlands and Belgium one is just so weird. Like, the guy had to move his door just so he could avoid, like, getting taxes from another country. It's just fucking stupid. Why do humans have to make things so difficult, man? But I enjoy this nevertheless. I do enjoy these reactions, and I appreciate the fact that people watch these reactions. It's crazy to me, but I love it so much. And, yeah, if you want to see more stuff like this, please let me know, because, I, again, I just enjoy seeing these types of videos. But, yeah, until next time, like, subscribe, and peace.